Isaiah chapter 56, Titus, the 56th book of the Bible. Thus saith the Lord, and all capital L, Jehovah, keep ye judgment. And when God says judgment, he's talking about holy and right judgment, not unlawful judgment. And do justice, proper justice. Justice according to what his word says. And you're going to see in a moment we're talking to the nation of Israel and the nation of Israel has been given laws and commandments and judgments. And they were not to be violated. We're under the law in Isaiah right now. And under the law you couldn't feel sorry because the guy was poor. You couldn't give him improper justice because he was rich. If someone violated the law and the act was against a widow. Well, the widow can't do nothing. So, no, that's not how it's supposed to be. For my salvation is near to come. Well, we know the salvation is Jesus Christ. Now, Isaiah don't know it. And according to what Scofield's note here of us, or is BC 712, <laughs> near 712 years? Haven't we seen the last few chapters of Isaiah? God is in no rush. And when you're impatient, and you're dealing with a patient God, you do battle. I mean, look how many years it's been, even Paul looked for the rapture. And God is so long-suffering, and God is so patient. That there were people that, you know, the rapture had passed. They gave up waiting. God never gives up waiting. And my righteousness, that's Jesus Christ. To be revealed. He hasn't been revealed yet. Now there's been prophecy... Jesus Christ is not revealed to the nation of Israel until John the Baptist shows up on the scene. Even then, they already when Jesus starts showing up, they start rejecting him almost instantly. Blessed, happy is the man that doeth this. Doeth what? Judgment and justice proper. So, let's take for a moment, let's stop right there for a moment. Let's take a judge. And he rejects the counsel, the righteousness, and the salvation of God. Start about today in the church. And he does proper judgment, he does proper justice to the ability that's given to him. Is he going to be blessed? Well, his life may be okay. People may not like him for the truth. But God's not pleased with him if he hasn't put his faith and trust in Jesus. Oh yeah, you know, they say, you know, God hates the sinner and love uh, God hates the sin and loves the sinner. You mean when they outright reject Jesus Christ and die and go to hell? You see, anybody can run to Isaiah 56 or run to any Old Testament and claim it in the name of the church. And yet the Bible says, Study to show thyself to prove unto God a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. Now let's read on. That keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. Dun, 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 dun. No one in the church age keeps the Sabbath. This is not a church age Gentile passage. Blessed are the me, blessed are the peacemakers. That's not written to Gentiles. That's not written to 
the church. When the Gospel of Matthew tells out and Jesus sends out disciples, do not go the way of the Gentiles. You know, the Great Commission of Matthew. Yeah, which, which tells you not to preach the gospel. Mark does. So what do many churches do today in their visitation? There's no gospel. What's Paul? Gospel, 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 gospel. Peter is even preaching the gospel. You'll find the death, burial, and resurrection of Peter, and you'll find the death, burial, and resurrection of Paul about Jesus Christ. And keepeth his hand from doing any evil. You see the works? You see the works? We're not saved by works. There's no works on our salvation. There's no Sabbath in the salvation, Isaiah 56. Neither let the son of a stranger. Okay, there's the Gentile. There he is. There's no church that has joined himself to the Lord. All right, here's a Gentile, a non-Jew, and he says, I am going to join Jehovah. I'm leaving the vanities of, of Gentiles, and I'm going to join the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It did happen in the Old Testament. Speak saying, the Lord has utterly separ separated me from his people, the Jews. Now, what, what is being said here, here comes a Gentile. And he's joined to the Lord. And his attitude by the Jews treating him, I guess God. God has forbidden me. God has left me. God's not dealing with me. And that's not the truth. And there was there was uh, prejudice amongst the Jews to the Gentiles. The, the woman in John chapter 4 at the well, uh, what are you doing talking to me? You Jews don't have anything to do with the Samaritans. Jonah, I want you to go to the Gentiles. Bye, I'm out of here, God. Peter, I want you to go to Cornelius, have, you know, eat and enjoy all the, no, oh, no, Lord God. I have not eaten anything unclean. And there are people who visited Jerusalem in the name of, of Jehovah, the Queen of Sheba, Naaman, the Ethiopian eunuch. And I guarantee others that have not been mentioned in the scriptures. His people are the Jews. Strangers are Gentiles. Neither let the eunuch, that's the first time that word shows up. Now a eunuch is a man who has had an operation three ways. Man has done an operation on the eunuch like Daniel and the young men. They can't have any children. There's a, a man that has been made a unit because he wants to be put aside for God alone. And then there's the eunuchs who've been made from their mother's womb, birth defect. So the eunuch, behold, I'm dry tree. I, I can't produce no children. I can't have any fruit. What good am I? And the Gentiles like, hey, no, I, I, I'm not Jewish. I'm not of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. What good am I? For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbath, not church age, and choose the things that please me, that eunuch is doing everything according to the law. And take hold of my covenant of Israel. Of the covenant that God made with Israel at Sinai. 
even unto them will I give in my house. Guess what my house is right now? The temple that's standing in Jerusalem. That has not been destroyed by Babylon yet. Solomon's temple. Within my walls a place. And a name better than the sons and of daughters. You can't have children. You can't have male children. You can't have daughters. I'll tell you what. I'll give you a name that's better than a father. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. That cut off again is an Israel statement that, hey, if an Israelite is cut off, you go to hell. There's no help. There's no salvation. There's no animal sacrifice. If you're cut off from the children of Israel, there's no hope. No Christian is ever cut off. Now, he may, may be disciplined from a church, but he's never cut off. And what God's saying, and, and the implication is for the eunuch is, I have made myself a eunuch for Jehovah. And then one day he's thinking, you know, I've given my life. Wait a minute. I don't have a wife and I don't have no children to get to, to Jehovah. What am I going to do? I, 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 I failed. And God said, that's okay. I understand. Because there are people in Isaiah's time and Jeremiah's time. That, that there are fathers and mothers. They, they have children. And they're giving them to Baal. They're giving them to false gods. They're giving them to the queen of heaven. You have given yourself and all yourself to me. And you obey the law. Your name. Now you see that everlasting name? Also the sons of the stranger, Gentiles, that join themselves to the Lord. The Gentile, I, I'm going to serve God. Naaman tells Elijah, hey, I, I'm done with my Assyrian gods. Now, Elijah, Elijah, I'm a military leader and I'm under this, this authority of this ruler. Now, this ruler worships a fallen god. I want to bring some dirt of Israel, to, to, you know, the promised land. And when I go into the into the house of that fallen God, I want to worship the God. Name is going to be in public glory. When I when I have to follow my military my military leader, the, the leader of my nation, I would ask you that you would pardon me. I'm guilty going into the house of the false God. I'm ordered to do it. Serve him, God. And to love the name of the Lord, Jehovah. And to be his servants. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath. Oh, there's the Sabbath again. And from polluting. Here are Gentiles keeping the Sabbath in the Old Testament under the law. That means that guy would have had to get circumcised. That means he has to give up his pork. He's to go three times a year, and he's doing everything that the law says for him to do. And take it hold of my covenant. It's remarkable. All right, verse seven and eight, millennium. Now watch in the middle of this verse. Even them, the eunuch and the Gentile, will I bring to my holy mountain. That ain't a holy mountain now, and it wasn't a holy mountain then. 
Not in Isaiah's time. Not in Jeremiah's time. Go back and look at the kings, and you can look at the kings that Isaiah is under. There's only a few good kings. And make them joyful. There's that joy again associated with the millennial kingdom. To make them joyful in my house of prayer. That's not the place in Isaiah. Matter of fact, to this time, Solomon's temple has been opened, has been closed. The gold has been stripped off the doors. The gold has been put on them. Now, it's an interesting fact that when Jesus is circumcised, <clears throat> he's brought to the temple according to the law. <coughs> Mary gives her sin offering. What do you read at that point when Jesus is circumcised? Anna, whose name means grace, shows up, and what does she do? She's a widow woman. And what is she doing? Offering prayers for all Israel. You, did you get that connection, or don't you not read the Old Testament? A house of prayer. What's that house of prayer? One woman is mentioned to be praying in that temple. Anna. At the time Jesus comes into that temple to be circumcised. Eight days. And it wasn't eight days after Christmas. Do you think that temple was called a house of prayer and a few years later Jesus is going to go in there and make a whip and scatter all the animals and all the birds and throw the money changers over and all the rockies? We're not talking about Solomon's temple. We're not talking about Herod's temple. We're talking about the millennial temple. Ezekiel's temple that's not been built. <coughs> Forgive me. And how many churches in the church say, oh, this is called the house of prayer? Are you keeping it? Well, we don't keep the Sabbath. Well, you see there, it says strangers come to church. It doesn't say church. You're not talking about a church building. Unless you keep the Sabbath. See, you go in there and you nitpick the scriptures. You don't rightly divide the scriptures. You're right there. We bring strangers to church. And you keep the Sabbath. And you're covenant. There's a church... And we pass going to, to going to our church, and a lot of our business we gotta go back and forth. There's a church in Daytona Beach. It's called the Covenant Church. Anything wrong with that church? The name Covenant Church. Any church that you find in the church aid with the name Kingdom, throw them out the door. We're not looking for a kingdom, and we're not under a covenant. They're burnt offering. Are we offering burnt offerings? They're offering burnt offerings in the millennium. And you find that in Ezekiel. Some pastors don't even believe that there are burnt offerings in the law in the tribulation period. And they're at error. Pray that your flight be not on the what? On the what? Change that in the Bible because... The fact is that your plane is not ready to be on the Sabbath in the tribulation period. And then you say there's no law. Haven't we been reading about the Sabbath and burnt offerings and a temple and woe be to a church in the church and it called the temple? What on earth are you stealing from the Old Testament from? That's not the temple of God. 
You're stealing from the Old Testament with the name of the church as a temple. I don't care if you're a big, well-known preacher. And sacrifices. What, what, what sacrifices? Cows, cattle, sheep, lambs, goats, the meat offering, the peace offerings, the transfers offering, the sin offerings. That church age? No. That's under the law where we are, and that's also in the millennium, and that's also in the tribulation period. Shall be accepted upon my altar. And you find Ezekiel speaking about that brazen altar. Now what the churches will do. If you come up to the prayer altar. Which now in many churches is a stage. It's a platform. I've seen churches allow children to go run around up there. If it's a rightfully prayer altar, the prayer altar in the Bible was the incense altar. Uh, where's the incense? The incense that rose up and smoke that rose up to heaven is, is the prayer of the saints. Scripture with scripture. All right, ready? For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. You know who said that? Matthew 21, 13, Mark 11, 17, Luke 19, 46. Jesus Christ said that in the first advent. We have the first advent words of Jesus in the midst of two verses about the millennium. And when Jesus said that in the first advent, where a woman is praying at the temple, all the references run to the millennial kingdom. It sure was not during his time. Do you know where the possibility where, where Judas ran and threw the 30 pieces of silver was probably in the temple? You know that when Jesus strand the animals and the birds do you know that in the temple there was cattle poop, lamb poop, bird poop, or dung, and piss? That's a Bible word. What? Those animals that were sitting in the temple held it? I don't think so. I've seen cows and sheep and all that. When they got to go potty, they go potty. They don't tell nobody. In the holy temple. And we can't miss, we can't mess up the rugs in the church. We can't mess up the pews in the church. It's a heavenly temple. Well, the Jews are messing up with animal dung and piss. The Lord God has gathered the outcasts of Israel, say it, the Lord said. That's the second advent. You got the millennium, you got Jesus speaking in the first advent, and then you got the, tr the, the, tr the second advent. It's not in order. But they saw Calvary. They saw Calvary. All right. Isaiah chapter 7 said, And behold, a woman shall conceive and bear a child. It is a verse about this, the, the, the virgin birth of Jesus. Okay. Gabriel shows up to a nice Jewish woman. He says, prophecy, I'm just, you know, you're going to have a baby. You're going to name his name Jesus. And he's going to be David's throne. He's going to be the king of Israel. Now Mary saw Calvary. Oh yeah, that's Calvary. <laughs> Mary didn't even know there was a virgin birth. She goes, Gabriel, I have not been with a man. 
That's okay. The, the Holy Spirit will, will overshadow you, and that holy thing that'll be in your room is of the Holy Spirit. Then she believed Gabriel, and she said, oh, we're on our way to Calvary. No, 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 no. Yet will I gather others. Who's the others? Unto him. The sheep nations that come out of the tribulation that help the Jews. They come in with the Jews under the leadership of Jesus Christ behind the saints that are behind Jesus Christ. Did not Jesus say, other sheep I have? There are not of this world, because that's a very important context as we pick up verses 9 to 12. Beside those that are gathered unto him. There are other nations Jesus is going to gather besides the Jews. There will be Gentiles that go in the millennium. And Jesus finished the statement by telling us the sheep and the goats. The goats go to hell, the sheep go into the millennium. I mean, this is more important than pulling that message out of your file cabinet that you already preached. That message you rehashed from last year. You're, you're, the people in your church are too stupid to realize. Didn't we hear this before? A preacher loves a church that don't take notes because they're not going to know it. They're not paying it. Listen, never mind a message that you preached last year or the beginning of the year, they don't even know what you preached last Sunday, on Monday, because they weren't listening. All right, verses 9, 12, whole different subject. All the beasts of the field come to devour. You know what animals want to do? They want to eat. Yea, all the beasts in the forest. They want to eat. When a lion sees a man or, or, a, lam or a, a lamb or a, or a man or an elk or a zebra, mmm, dinner. His watchmen are blind. They are ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. I don't mean stupid dogs. That means dogs who can't speak. Dumb means you can't speak. Dogs don't speak. But he's likened the watchmen as, as dogs, who in the Bible is a type of false prophets, false teachers, who want to eat as the beasts want to eat. They're all dumb dogs and cannot bark. That's the only place bark shows up in the Bible. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. They're, they're lazy. Yea, they are greedy dogs, which Paul says is not to be a preacher or minister, is to be, you know, for filthy lucre. But going back to the time Isaiah, there are false prophets running around and they want to devour the sheep. And you read about that in Ezekiel. You read about that in the Old Testament, how there are shepherds and, and the minor prophets will speak about they kill and maim and they don't care about the sheep. They eat the sheep. They feed off the sheep. They're, they're, they're false shepherds. And Jesus comes along and says, I am the true shepherd. He that came before me is a murderer. What's he do? He kills the sheep. In the church age, there are, there are people that, that get behind the pulpit. There are pastors. There are preachers. The only reason why they are there, they get easy money so they can feed off the sheep. And they're taken in and the people are suckers. And they're not getting sheep food. The sheep are the food. 
Imagine how many men and God forbid women are going to stand at either either judgment, the great white throne judgment, or the judgment seat of Christ, and they're going to stand up there and stand before God, Jesus Christ, and they're going to have to give an account how they fed on the sheep, but the sheep did not get fed. They said what they wanted to see to fill the collection plate. But when it came to filling the, the, the nourishment of the sheep, they didn't do nothing. And I got one big, filthy, rich minister, preacher, television on my mind right now that has yachts and boats and airplanes. That's a dumb dog. He doesn't speak. He opens his mouth. I, I couldn't listen to the guy for five minutes. I tried. When I was in the hospital, he came on. I tried. I couldn't even watch it for five minutes. I couldn't even watch that woman preach. I was already preaching at her. Y'all not be there, lady. I couldn't watch it. I had a preacher the other day. I said, you know what? I'm going to listen to this guy. And he's not even five minutes in his message. And he's talking about how Jesus died on Good Friday. Goodbye. See you later. You're done. They devoured the sheep, and that's found in the, in the Old Testament, if you ever read the Old Testament. They are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. They want more, 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 more. They're not content. We look at myself a church building. Yeah, all right. We got to get ourselves pews. Yeah, all right. We got to be got to get ourselves a steeple. Yeah, right. Now we got to have a fellowship hall. Yeah, right. Now what else we got to get? They're not content. What's the next big thing we can get the money to, for people to give us money? They're any not spiritually feeding the sheep. But, you know, we'll take them out to eat. We'll have fellowships. We'll have fish fry. We'll have all kinds of chicken and stuff like that. We'll feed their material flesh, but won't feed their soul. And then they give that message out, Malachi. Oh, you know, God will bless you. You know, if you give your try. God will call out the, the spiritual blessings of heaven when you give all your money and stuff like that. And that defiles the life of Paul. Paul died. He said, you know all the riches Paul said? You bring me some, some the, the parchments and a couple books. Where was your building, Paul? Where was your great assembly, Paul? Well, yeah, Demas left me run to Thessalonica. Only Luke is with me. Now, the other men went out into ministry. But according to the scriptures, Paul's the only person Paul had with him when he finally died looked like Luke. The great miracle here had a doctor with him. And the fat cats that were in Jerusalem with their castles swindling the people at the temple. The high priests and the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Isn't that interesting? And they were getting upset at Jesus. They're getting upset at the apostles because they envied Jesus and the people were going after Jesus and they were going after the Father. And oh my, the whole world might get saved. Amen. Not possible, but amen. Well, everybody leaves the temple, we'll have to get a job. And preachers will say, well, I'm not afraid to get a job. Here, shut up. Maybe God will try you. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. Now, what is the retaliation? What is the opposite of that statement? What did Jesus say in John chapter 10? Study John chapter 10. Jesus said, I am the shepherd of the sheep. 
which who is the sheep? Israel. Others that become for me are hireling. They do it for the money. You get? Did you get the cross reference? A hireling cares not for the sheep. Oh no, a lion! Bye. And that shepherd will get the staff. He'll get the slingshot. He'll get the rod, and he'll tackle a bear and a lion to help that sheep. You know what reference I gave to? No, they don't have to veggie tale about that. Uh -oh. Get your head out of veggie land. Get your nose in the Bible. You mean they couldn't run back to Isaiah when Jesus said uh, that my house would be called a house of bread? They, they couldn't run back to Isaiah. They didn't study Isaiah to say, hey, look, Calvary's next. No, 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 no. And then Jesus said, I have other sheep in John chapter 10. What's the other sheep? What's in this chapter? The strangers. The Gentiles. Who is a stranger to the Jewish people? A people called the church, saved by their Jewish Messiah, Jesus. You know what a shame is going to be to, to the Jews at the Great White Throne Judgment? They'll be lined up in, in at the Great White Throne Judgment. On the other side of the Great White Throne, there'll be a bunch of Gentile, dead dog strangers that have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ as the Jew who rejects Messiah goes off and burns in the lake of fire forever. Now that is a shame to the Jew. That it is their Messiah that says, Depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And here's all my people that, here's all the strangers that put their faith and trust with in me. And they're no longer strangers. They are the children of God by adoption of the Holy Spirit. And every rabbi that teaches otherwise today is that dumb dog. They speak, but they say nothing. They don't have no understand. They think Isaiah 53 is the nation of Israel rather than the Messiah. And I read that uh, somewhere the other day. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for proving to me that Israel says that that's the nation, but it's really the Messiah. They all look to their own way. They look for them out for themselves. They care for themselves. They don't care about the flock. Everyone for his gain. They're selfish from his quarter. His group of people, uh, you know. And there are people that go into the ministry. It's a nice, easy, comfortable job. I don't really come up with one Sunday morning message and I'm happy. And they're happy. Then their church is no Sunday evening, no Wednesday eve or midweek service. The pastor does not visit you in the hospital. The pastor does not come to your family. And if you need any extra services as a marriage or, or a funeral, he will outright charge you. And he's got a staff that you call that will take care of the people. Listen, you watch those television evangelists and preachers and teachers. Are they going to come and do your funeral? Are they going to visit you in the hospital? The big mega churches. You think those big mega churches, you think the preacher behind that pulpit knows you and your family personally? Come ye. There's an invitation. Revelation 20 says, come. Invitations come. Isaiah chapter 1. Come now. Let us reason together. That's God saying, come on. Come ye. Say they. Oh, that's not God's invitation. That's the dumb dogs. What's the dumb dog say? I will fetch wine. Where the Bible's against alcohol drinking. 
You know the law state that the priest was not to drink? We will fill ourselves with strong drink, alcohol. You know, there's a lot of churches out there that have actual alcohol in their services. And tomorrow shall be as this day. Every day is going to be the same and much more abundant. Live happy, be joyful, because tomorrow is going to be greater and grand. It's a positive. It's a happy message. Love God and God will love you and everything will be great and wonderful. <laughs> Liars.